It's hard to imagine that our oceans and seas could ever be vulnerable. But a few months ago, I found something on a beach that has completely changed my opinion. It's made me realize that despite appearances, they really are in trouble. After a bit of research, I soon discovered that what I have found were called nurdles. So I've come to meet Lizzie Daly, ambassador of the Marine Conservation Society, to find Hi, out more. Yeah, how are you? So this is what I found. These are noodles, yeah. yeah. So where did you find those then? In Crete. In Crete, okay. Yeah, I was on holiday and you know when you're just sunbathing and yeah. you're sifting through the sand and I came across these tiny white beads and at the time I had no idea what they were but this this is it, that they're is, noodles. Yeah. yeah, and unfortunately these are the things that are not just around the UK but around the globe. Like why are they on pretty much most beaches worldwide? Noodles themselves, they're factory made pellets, right? And they make the raw material that can be found in all our plastics. So bottles, buttons, pens. And actually the process in making noodles, there is so many steps to it and it is on such a global scale that there is of course some spillages of these noodles, whether it's through shipping, whether mm. it's through uh, plastic manufacturing or the actual production of the pellets themselves is going to happen and the scale of plastic produc production on the planet is so large that we now have so many in our oceans. It's not us just having massive disasters all the time when a ship kind of overturns and all the nurdles get let loose in the ocean. It isn't simply because we're making such large volumes of plastic pellets on a daily basis. You do get these ships that overturn and of course release all these plastics yeah, into the yeah. ocean and they're lost. But actually this is a continual process and a, a real problem uh, that's getting worse and worse as time is going on. And we need to really kind of be aware of it. Yeah. It's funny that you mentioned you weren't aware actually of noodles before you went to Crete, which is... No, and I consider myself as someone who's quite invested in nature. I am passionate about it. I love it. I try and, you know, help, help the environment. Yeah, I had never heard of noodles before which has just blown my mind, yeah, especially it's, because it's such a huge problem. Yeah, and I, I do genuinely believe that if we were to go down this beach and ask a lot of people, I don't think they'd know either. No. And what you have to think about is the effect of these plastics being in the ocean. Mm. And as a result, that the marine life that are living in the oceans are actually ingesting these plastics. Yeah. This is a perfect example of how small these noodles really are. So these are quite large, a couple of millimetres. Are they? You... They're tiny. These are quite large because noodles can reach tiny microscopic sizes to like unseen to the naked eye yeah and so when you've got these yep still really small naturally the size of a fish egg a prey item for a lot of fish in our yeah, oceans yeah. and then even smaller so even smaller fish that that feed on tiny tiny plankton all the rest of it it's it's a real kind of prevalent problem for our marine life and hard to identify how much of it is in our seas when yeah, it is that yeah. size so can we get rid of them or is that because oh. I mean, I'm looking at this bottle, there's like not very many in there, but obviously people find thousands on the beach, so it must be difficult, but is there a way or...? Yeah, there's the, the Great Noodle Hunt. Yes, I've heard of that. That's from FIDRA. They're a conservation charity in Scotland, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, they have this great, great bit of citizen science. Anyone can do it. The public, you know, mm, families, yeah. friends, whatever, go down to a beach and it's a great way of collecting evidence and data to take to kind of local plastic industries and say look at the damage um, that plastics are having it on our environment yeah. and in a way it's collecting valuable data for measuring the amount of plastics so yeah, on, yeah. on our oceans. Nurdles are often mistaken for food by fish, mammals and seabirds. Once ingested they sit in the animal's stomach making them feel full preventing the animal from eating real food. As whole nurdles sit in the stomach Microscopic fragments can pass straight into the animal's circulatory system, becoming lodged in the animal's tissues. There's been a recent, well, fairly recent study in the Faroe Islands, which looked at how plastic is actually moving up the food chain. So they found that northern fulmars, which are um, surface feeding seabirds, they're eating plastic. And then when they get eaten by the great skewers, right. they're actually passing the plastic on, which I personally find really, really worrying because we're part of the food chain. Absolutely. We eat fish, shellfish, all sorts. How, I'm actually dreading asking you this, but how likely are we to find 
plastic on our dinner plates? Like, uh, it, it, change, it really depends on kind of what you're eating and how much of it you're eating and, mm. and the parts of that animal that you eat, right? Yeah. So a lot of this plastic that enters the, the guts of these, of these fish. I mean, fish yeah. is such a popular food for those Brits. Atlantic cod is yeah, eaten yeah. by so many people. Um, and they eat a variety of foods from, from larger fish, to, from herring to worms, you know, mm. and they eat a variety of stuff, but it has been shown that they also ingest plastic. Yeah. We've got oh. uh, John Dory as well, a popular fish. 48% yeah. of John Dory have plastic. 48? 48%. Um, Worldwide, 48. In the UK. In the UK. In the UK. Uh, yellow sole, lower 26. But we're not talking single, single figure percentages here. Yeah, we're talking yeah. worrying numbers. And That's as you say, awful. the plastic concentration goes up and up and up as it goes through the, the yeah. food chain. So, I mean, we can't really be definite. We can only be continuing to look at the percentages of plastics in these fish and how much we are eating and what we're eating. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest. So, uh, we all love fish and chips, right? Absolutely. Uh, the fish Who that doesn't? we were eating probably had plastic in its stomach. Yeah, it's That's so worrying. So, there are always videos on Facebook of beach whales and people who are just pulling so many plastic bags out of their bellies. Yeah. And obviously, plastic bags aren't nurdles, although they were created by nurdles. But it's just one and the same issue, isn't it? It's this general plastic problem that we have that is affecting the environment so badly to be honest when you see those videos i guess it's a lot more a lot more striking when it's an animal of that size that's been yeah. affected by something that is so small when you look at a plastic bag or even a bottle to think that a bottle is the equivalent of 600 noodles mm. think how many bottles go into the ocean 800 million tons of rubbish every year oh. go into our ocean <laughs> it's just crazy it's numbers just what do you do when you know plastic is going into the ocean yeah. can't biodegrade staying in the ocean yeah. we're adding to it more and more and it's just swirling around in an environment where the ecosystem and the wildlife that lives there relies on that environment oh, so yeah. much so i'm sure other people can relate to this but when i mean i i care so much about what happens to this earth and i feel like i want to help but when faced with such a huge issue i just I feel so helpless and as an individual, how could I ever help the situation? What would you tell someone like me about what I could do, even if it is small, just to help this plastic issue? Yeah, well you're right, you are not alone in that feeling and it is quite hard to look at those statistics and, and not feel kind of hopeless in a way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but luckily we do have organisations and charities that are doing some great campaign work and putting in place some really easy day-to-day -day things you can do to reduce these problems. Things like having a keep cup instead of having a, a takeaway. Yeah. You know, a loads of people everyday coffees take away and the amount of plastic that comes from those alone is oh yes. yeah it's <laughs> very very frightening um you've got the wet wipe campaign that mcs mm -hmm. are doing now because people are flushing wet wipes oh, uh, yeah. they're not very good at um breaking up and they can be harmful to marine life they can get actually stuck in your in your pipes in your drains oh, so no. it increases water bills that's no good for anyone no. <laughs> um other campaigns you've got your beach clean you've got your massive yeah. beach clean coming up with the marine conservation society middle of september fantastic Fantastic event! It'll be a really, really big uh, across, event yeah. across the UK. To so try and... anyone goes out and just joins. Yeah. Any your local beach, it could be any beach near you. Just get down there, family and friends, yeah. and make it into a bit of a competition. How much can you pick up? Even maybe try and find some noodles. Yeah. <laughs> because there's the great noodle hunt, yeah, right? Yeah. Which is equally um, uh, necessary and fun. It's a good, good way of getting kids involved as yeah. well. Try and make it a bit of a competition. A lot of what these organisations are doing, and, and FIDRA do it as well, is they, they're chatting with industries and being, and being working with them in saying, how can we combat this and make more manageable ways of producing pellets and the whole process to reduce kind of all these noodles going into the ocean. Yeah. It is very daunting. It is really hard to kind of say, I picked up three bits of plastic. Yeah that's it now it's you know it's an ongoing issue but yeah. it does start with the small things and if we didn't start with the small things then you know we wouldn't be any better off so exactly. the more people that are aware of it and want to get involved and do get involved the better yeah <laughs> it's actually quite ironic though to think that 
what plastic was actually invented to try and protect animals, protect really? wildlife. Yeah. So back in 1902, yeah. plastic was invented by a man who was fed up of um, the ivory demand to make uh, not bowling balls, but the you know the oh the uh, bit, skittle balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah kind of made of ivory and he came across um, a synthetic plastic called birate or bicate mm. oh, and that was the the beginning of plastic no way and then the so, boom in the 21st 20th century yeah so made with good intentions however i guess we just didn't realize did we that's it we just yep. didn't know yep. and now i guess we are all slowly starting to become aware we can actually do something about it yeah absolutely everyday little things veg with no packaging take a cup around, try and not flush wet wipes yep. and, and eventually we'll be better off. Wow, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. No, thank it's you. It's been fascinating to talk to you. From finding those nurdles on holiday, I've discovered this huge problem and I can't help but think about all the plastic I've ever used in my life and what's happened to it? Has any of it ended up out there in the ocean? I really want to reduce my own plastic footprint so join me take part in a local beach clean the nurdle hunt try and reduce your plastic use on a day-to-day -day basis and together we can make a difference and it is not too late